frontal hairline recession isn't what they taught us. Here's the truth. I am a QBS and this is Back to the Barber. In 1845, America stood at a frontier. Texas had declared independence, but its fate was uncertain. General Zachary Taylor was ordered south, not to conquer, but to hold a fragile line. At that moment, the question wasn't empire, it was survival. Would this land remain divided or united into one? And the truth is, your scalp faces the same question today because your hairline doesn't just fade, it gets a next. Let me explain. Across the top of your skull runs the coronal suture, a seam once porous, once alive. In youth, it allows blood and lymph to flow freely from back to front. Think of it like a river with no dam. Circulation moving smoothly across the land and circulation running strongly subterranean. Now, imagine the opposite. When restriction rises, circulation falls. That's the law of the restoration equation. H equals K multiplied by circulation divided by restriction. Circulation divided by restriction defines your baseline or hair quality. Worsening conditions pull us from the omega scalp towards alpha conditions or prostate dominant. Like the gallia and the depot, under years of inflammation and androgenic stress, this seam hardens. It calcifies into a wall. I call it the great divider. Instead of a unifier, it becomes a separatist. Behind it, the scalp depot, plaque heavy, inflamed, congested, tight, and creating the second head. In the front, what we call the frontal line, is the annex, starved of circulation, slowly claimed by the face. See, we have been taught that the frontal line just recedes, but it seems to me that the facial cells occupy the scalp area, almost annex it because the scalp area literally becomes smaller. Imagine what happens when liquid pancake mix sits on heat. It draws up, it gets denser, and it becomes smaller. Now, take a look at your receding hairline. It neatly pulls back. It doesn't recede, i.e. follicles telogenize randomly, which would be natural. It seems that the frontal collapses, compresses, and where does it collapse to? The suture line. This is why the crown depot looks greasy and heavy and thick, while the frontal flattens like an extended face, clean. See, your hairline doesn't just simply recede, it's conquered. And speaking of conquest, whether it's personal debt, illness, or uncertainty, regardless of what you, the listener, has to conquer, it starts with confidence, faith. The belief that no matter what things may look like, you've been through worse and you've made it out alive, stronger, wiser, and more resilient. This is no different than Zach Taylor's story. History remembers Zach Taylor as a general, but here's what it forgets. He wasn't always a hero. He wasn't always confident. He wasn't legendary. Early in his career, he was ordinary. An unknown officer seen as kind of dependable, but really unremarkable. When he was sent south, he was sent as a placeholder. As a matter of fact, in the future, he had one of the shortest terms in presidency, less than two years. Some say one of the most unaccomplished bland administrations of US presidents. But you know him now because he decided that status quo was not enough. He set off for victory. If he failed, history would have brushed him aside. And that's exactly what happens to your hairline 
when a frontal and exome is kind of left undefeated and brushed to the side. It slips quietly away. It recedes row by row, not because it was destined, not because of nature, not because of your bad genes, not because of DHT, because no one held the line against the suture. The scalp is like a nation. Each section depends on the others for resources, protection, trade, and waste removal. And when those sections are cut off, walled off, isolated, they entropy. We experience hair loss. This is why the crown clogs with cholesterol, plaque, and DHT, while the front looks empty as if it was erased. The truth, the front isn't dying from hormones. It's starving from disconnection. The sutures seem hard, calcified, rigid, and quite opposite of the one sponge-like soft and malleable form it once had. It seems that DHT doesn't affect the follicles. It runs deeper than even the skin. It ossifies the entire dermis, even the sutures themselves. But here's the secret. If you keep the seam porous, if you maintain the cross flow, the scalp remains one land undivided then the frontal hairline would not be a next think about this hair doesn't fall because follicles fail it falls because flow falls restriction is the true enemy h equals k multiplied by circulation over restriction does this make more sense now visually various parts of the scalp show this phenomenon differently but hold the line and hair loss becomes undetectable. See, Taylor didn't defend the frontier to watch it collapse. He discovered his strength in holding the line. And in that crucible, he became more than ordinary. And you must face the same frontier between the depot and the annex, between the crown and the hairline. Your struggle isn't with genetics, it's with degradation. Your struggle has been the slow, annexation of the frontal as the suture closed where does the waste go where does the toxins go lipids sebum cholesterol dht it collects and the depot takes over the entire scalp eventually but mostly stopping at the gallia wall at tourniquet and around the entire head but if you hold the line you don't just slow hair loss you claim your manifest destiny in our case manifest trusty you've seen this the temples thinner each morning comb the selfie you don't post the hats we wear the faceless youtube channel until i can reannex this space the heavy gel barber enhancements the powders and the fibers the angle on zoom that makes you look older than you feel but there's hope check out number 12 in the general theory of hair loss and reversitivity the great split coronal suture sealing and the annexation for more details keep this in mind this theory is always under development and is no way finished but it gives me us at least light in the fog the common capillus codex and the sequences that i derive from this material that you all call regimens and protocols would help us target the frontal receding annex and the suture help however in general in the law of reversitivity when the seam hardens scalp divides keep it porous keep the flow alive and the scalp remains one but the coronal seam is only one frontier the next the galia that tourniquet or belt wrapped around your scalp that's where the next battle lies america once declared its manifest destiny to stretch from sea to shining sea your scalp deserves the same destiny to remain whole unbroken and united president taylor did his part now it's your turn. In conclusion, the gray split is the cause of the frontal annex or the hairline or receding and the preserver of the second head. Like, comment, and subscribe as iron sharpens iron and we only have each other. And remember, if I can do it, you all can do it too. Let's get you back to the barber.